Hello, in this video, Dr. Cho is going to talk about the Book of Acts, Chapter 2, which is about the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. Our, our key verse is Chapter 2, verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So the, today's passage talks about uh, the work of the Holy Spirit on, in Pentecost and that um, led to the born of the first uh, church, uh, Jerusalem church. So today we can see that the work of the Holy Spirit, the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, when this is a sailboat you know, in the ocean, so let's say if you want to learn about uh, sailing boat, so you need to buy like this kind of boat, invest money and then buy a boat. And then, and then also probably you need to go to some experts uh, about the boat, sailing boat and learn about how to, you know, the skills and, and techniques and things like that. So then you go to ocean and put a boat like this. But what is the most important thing, thing for boat to move? That is a wind. So without wind, this boat would not move at all. So wind is very important. So wind is like the Holy Spirit. So, and the disciples after Jesus resurrected, just together, together and prayed and made unity, right, together. And, and, and they studied the Bible probably and prepare to become witness of God, to go around the world. But the Holy Spirit, until the Holy Spirit comes, nothing happens, right? But when the Holy Spirit comes like a wind, everything starts moving. So today's passage talks about the first main walk of the Holy Spirit in, in New Testament, and that initiated the bone of the church and the world mission. So that's the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, today let's think about what is the meaning of this work of the Holy Spirit in an early church and what can we learn from this, okay? So verse one, uh, next to verse one, let's read the verse one together. Let's go. When the day of a Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. So Pentecost. Then why this happened in Pentecost? Let's think about this. The work of the Holy Spirit happened in the Pentecost. What's the meaning of Pentecost? Okay, we have to go back to the meaning of the Pentecost in the Old Testament. So Pentecost is the one of the three major Jewish festivals. If you look at uh, Levit Leviticus, God commanded Israel people, commanded Israel people to uh, observe, all others observe, three annual festivals. Three annual festivals. You have to gather together in Jerusalem and, and celebrate. Okay, three festivals. The first one is the Passover, second one is the Pentecost, and third one is the Tabernacle, Feast of the Tabernacle. So you have to observe this uh, uh, feast. So first one is the Passover. What happened in Passover? Jesus died. In Old Testament, it's very important because it is uh, uh, independence, freedom, right? The meaning of uh, Jewish independence and freedom. And in the, on this day, Jesus died as a pen. And then the Pentecost is usually the first day of Pas Passover, then week of weeks. It's called the Feast of the Weeks. So the reason is it's uh, seven weeks later, week of the weeks. So. 49 days after, so fifth of the day after Passover, Passover, that is a Pentecost, okay? So then the uh, Feast of Tabernacle, so fifth days after the Passover, and then it is also called the Feast of the Harvest. Another name is the Feast of the Harvest, because they, uh, the Israel people bring the first fruit. They bring the first fruit and worship God in this feast. Okay, so that is the meaning of the feast, that's why it's called the Feast of the Harvest. And then, the, remember this, Feast of the First Fruits. 
This is the meaning. So you bring the first fruit to God. Okay? And then you think about the church. This is the first, first fruit of the New Testament also. The church was born. So that's the meaning. And then also, if you look at Exodus chapter 23, verse 16, it says, Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. You bring the first fruit. Okay? So, this is Pentecost. Sometimes it's more popular for diaspora, diaspora Jews. Diaspora means dispersed, right? Scattered. Scattered Jews all over the world. They gather together in Jerusalem once a year at least. So Passover is the, probably the biggest one, but people usually travel in the Pentecost. The reason is because usually weather condition is good. Weather condition is nice and so that they can travel better. So that's why it's more popular probably uh, for the diaspora Jews. And most of diaspora Jews at this time of the Pentecost gather in Jerusalem. A lot of, a lot of traveled Jews. Whether Jews or, so in the passage it says, converted to Judaism. People, maybe Gentiles, who converted to Judaism. They came to Jerusalem. Okay? So that's why probably it happened also in this Pentecost the fast, uh, festival. Okay? okay? So and then they were all together in one place. We don't know exactly, it didn't say, Luke didn't say it is upper room, but some people say it's upper room, some people say different ways, but because it's a large people gather also and around the house. So, so it's not clear, but it says house and also it's one place, maybe. Okay? And then they receive the Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay, next. So, then what happened in verse 2 and 3? Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. There was a first audio kind of a, a right violence wind sound. Not wind, maybe not wind, but the sound like a blowing of wind. It's not like a sound. It's a wind is coming like a tornado, but sound like blowing of violent wind. So wind sound, maybe not wind, but the wind sound. The main is a really, really loud sound, so that the other people can hear too around around this place. So. Filled the whole house they were sitting and they saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest to rest on each of them like this. So they, there's a picture here. So each individual. So individual fire came down and then separated me, right? Like this. And each individual uh, fire was on each of these people. 12 disciples and uh, maybe 120 total. So you can see the audiovisual pr uh, presentation of this walk of the Holy Spirit. So that's what happened. Verse 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So here it says tongues. So here it uh, looks like a tongue. And the Holy Spirit looks like a tongue, or the fire looks like a tongue. The so tongue, the fire usually represent what? Fire in the Old Testament represent the presence of God. Fire. You see, the when God, uh, the Israel people were guided in the desert, was a fire, pillar of fire, right? And then cloud and fire. So, so it's the presence of God. And then fire was looks like a tongue. And also here they speak in other tongues. So here. Tongue is a, uh, in other uh, verses after this, it says language also. Meaning in, in Greek it says dialect. Dialect meaning language. So it is kind of a, a miraculous way to deliver God's message to Jewish and then disciples and also and, and then audience. There was audience. Who was? Who or what? Audience were, was a Jewish diaspora people. So they can understand. So it's, this, it's, this, this uh, tongue is probably different from uh, ecstatic spiritual language that Paul mentioned about in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, Paul mentioned about, about these uh, uh, tongues. People uh, kind of uh, uh, boast about their tongues so that you don't receive tongue, you don't do tongue, then you are not Christian, true Christian. There was a conflict. 
And Paul clearly talks about tongue you do by yourself, not in public in the church, because it's not beneficial. Because people say, you know, criticize each other and divide each other because of the tongue. But definitely this tongue is different. So here in the first church born, this tongue is a dialogue, so we, which means different uh, uh, language that other Jew, Jewish diaspora can hear and understood, he, uh, heard and understood. So that's what it means here. And then what is the, what is the content of these tongues? And verse 11 say here, declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues, in our own language here. So these uh, diaspora, Jewish diaspora people, uh, as I said, a Jewish convert, also some people, they can speak probably bilingual. They can speak uh, in Jewish language, Aramaic, and at the same time their own language, maybe in Arabic or some, you know, some other language. Uh, Greeks probably in the Rome, people in Rome. So they can hear this language from these uh, country boys. You know? So they were, that's why they were surprised also. We'll talk about that later. But the content was about the wonder, wonders of God. We don't know what that is, but the, about the wonders they praise God probably. And it talks about wonders of God. Uh, and next, let's see. Let's then talk about the, what's the, who are the, those people, Jewish diaspora. Why God delivered the message to them in Jerusalem? What is the meaning of their con, uh, conversion to Christianity? Okay. So Jewish diaspora, diaspora Jews, or now they were staying. As I said, they came to Jerusalem. Okay, in verse 5 says, Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Okay, so meaning that all over the world they came. So you see here, 9, verse 9 and 10, it says, uh, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, uh, Mesopotamia, regions of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, part of Libya, Neo Cyrene, Cyrene here, and visitors from Rome, right? Credence and Arabs. So, so you can see that uh, this is a map of Jewish diaspora. You can see from here, Jewish people started the exile. The first exile was Assyria. Assyria Empire invaded Northern Kingdom Israel, right? And then they they moved to Assyria. And then after Babylon Empire invaded, and they moved to Babylon, exile. They stay there and live there. And then, since then, they lost the nation. They spread it out all over the world. You can see here from Palestine, like Babylon here, and Assyria here, all the way. This is the current day Turkey, right? All the Greece, this area. This is the Turkey and Greece and Rome and Spain. You can see the Spain and all Europe. And then also Northern Africa. Cyrene and, and then Alexandria here, Egypt, and also some of the northern kingdom, Libya, modern day Libya. They spread it out all over the world. Probably there was a God's plan also here. So if you look at the Act Book of Acts, a lot of initially Paul preached the gospel to who? Also first, first the disciples. They preached the gospel in the synagogues first. They went to synagogues and preached the gospel. And some of them supported him them. So you can see the God fearing Jews eventually became the pillar of the church in each, in each, all around the world. So, and then they gathered together here in the, uh, Jerusalem and here the message from Peter. After this, uh, next week we'll talk about the Peter's uh, uh, historical message. And then because of that message, what happened? 3,000 people converted. 3,000 people accepted the gospel and they became Christians. That's the first church. Okay, so you can see that the first church is definitely God-fearing Jews who became the pillar of the church. And then after that they message, what happened? After this message and, and they became the first church members, they spread it out again all over the world. You know, some people probably, even Paul cannot reach these places, right? Paul was not able to reach to this kind of European places or some of the Northern Africa but all over the world, the Jewish people, the Christ became Christian and they be, became the witnesses of Christ and they, they built a church. And it's amazing, right? It's a God's plan is amazing. They gather together and kind of bomb like a bomb, nuclear bomb, and spread it out from Jerusalem. That's what happened 
in Jerusalem when Holy Spirit came. You can see God's amazing plan. And God, Jesus said, promised that, wait until the Holy Spirit come here in Jerusalem. And then the Holy Spirit will come. And you go to, from Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, all over the world, right? So then that's what happened. And, and, and you can see that the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit in that sense. Okay, so, so then what happened here, more detail to, to, uh, to them. In verse 6 and 8, next. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because they each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, and all these who are speaking Galileans, meaning that they are country boys, country people. They probably use a little bit of dialect. So, so oh, there's a Galilean accent. They have probably a Galilean accent. And then they're speaking all language and also some, some other language the different, uh, from different countries. Then how is it that each of us hear them native language? So this miraculous phenomenon opened these people's hearts. So only God can do this. You know, they opened their heart to listen to Peter's message next week we will uh, study. And then in verse 12, later, amazed and perplexed, they asked one each other, Who does, what does it mean? Some, however, made fun of them and then too much wine. So, but later Peter stood up and then he, uh, uh, responded to this. But he probably is Jews again, is the bilingual Jews, and they witnessed this miracle of, miracle of speaking tongues, speaking different language. Never learned this language before, but they spoke in uh, foreign language, which was amazing. And they, uh, because this God can only do this, and they open their heart. So then, in today's passage, okay, what's the meaning of this? Let's just summarize in today's passage. So there are two important meanings of this uh, Pentecost miracle. Okay, the first one is, the church has now been empowered for the world mission that Jesus commanded, commanded. Now they are empowered with the Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus promised in chapter 1. And with the coming of the Spirit, the witness began. And it began with the enthusiastic praise of the Spirit-filled Christians and inspired someone of the Peter, uh, the, uh, Apostle Peter, and immediately 3,000 converts to Christ among the diaspora Jews. This is the meaning. So the Pentecost, and then after that, as I showed in the map, spread this uh, gospel all over the world after this episode. So that's the, the importance, the, the meaning of the Pentecost. And the second thing is, is also important. The second thing is that just as Pentecost was the festival of the first fruits, the old, in Old Testament, the meaning of Pentecost. So these are the first fruits of the harvest by the Holy Spirit in New Testament. First fruit of the harvest of the Holy Spirit. So Pentecost is the beginning. It's the beginning of the harvest. They will continue from Jerusalem and to Samaria and to Rome, from Jews to Samaritans, and from God-fearing diaspora Jews to Gentiles. So this is, this is the first fruit. Not the exact meaning of the Pentecost. So we need to when we look at this past study this passage, we can see that the work of the Holy Spirit, the most one of the most important meaning and work of the Holy Spirit is world mission. So world mission, the Holy Spirit's interest is world mission. Spread the gospel to all nations so that the people in all world can listen to the gospel and say it. That's the interest, most important interest of the Holy Spirit. So we need to remember that the Holy Spirit works not only transforming the people to change their lives, so, so that uh, through their witness, those became what? Witnesses. Those people are transformed to become witnesses, and their witnesses will go out and spread the gospel so that other people can hear the gospel. That's, that we need to have that mind, the world mission mind, when we think about the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And the second is, when we are transformed, when it happens, when Holy Spirit comes on, on us, we are the first fruit. That is the beginning. That is not the end, right? That is just, we are the first fruit. That is the beginning, not the end. That's the beginning, and then that's the beginning of and then begin, becoming witness, so that the, the gospel can be spread out 
from first fruit of the Holy Spirit in me, right? So we have to uh, uh, receive the Holy Spirit. We transform this. It's a similar meaning, but more uh, more personal level is that uh, we are changed, transformed by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Through the, that, that is a miracle actually. That is a miracle. My tra- transformation is a miracle. And that starts from me, and then God wants to be uh, spread it around us, to so family and friends and the society. Wherever we go, wherever we go. Some region, some region we are like a diaspora in this world, right? And the for- it's like a, it's a foreign country to us. We, our true home is where? It's the kingdom of God. We, our life is a journey. Our life is like a, you know, journey to the kingdom of God. We are pilgrims. In this journey, journey, a home. We are like a diaspora. So we will go wherever God wants me, wants us to go. But wherever we are there, we are witnesses, so that the gospel is can, can be.